Welcome back to the boat restoration series where I'm converting a 1940 seaplane tender into an off-grid liveaboard. So I started back by cleaning out the bilge in the wheelhouse cabin, removing any dirt and grime that had built up between the ribs. So I'm just making more space in the fore cabin. I'm putting back the lift out sections, hoovering in between all the ribs and underneath all the lift out areas and uh, just making it more manageable to work and make everywhere a bit more accessible. So unfortunately the windows started leaking again, you know about a year ago I resealed these windows, uh, I can't understand what has gone wrong here. Um, I originally sealed these windows at Sikaflex EBT Plus and now I'm resealing them all again on uh, the outer lip from the aluminium, uh, in between the aluminium and the glass, so it's just the outer lip and I'm resealing them with Sikaflex 291i which is the marine standard, the marine grade Sikaflex. It's you know, it's the stuff to be used outdoors. Uh, they say you can even use it below the waterline. So I'm going with this stuff and hopefully it holds up to the test. Um, it's just so devastating to have to do this work again. You know, when you think you've, you've done great work and then suddenly it's like a punch in the stomach and uh, having to do it all over again. So uh, doing that again, and then also on the inside, I've noticed a, a buildup of water. So it's not between, you know, over a year ago when I resealed these windows, I, I, I sealed this outside between the glass and the aluminium frame. I also took out each and in, each individual window and sealed where the, the aluminium touches the where it beds with the plywood uh, plywood of the cabin. And I did not use it sparingly. I went oh, probably overkill with the Sikaflex there. So um, I really can't understand why there's water building up on the inside lip. And it just defies the laws of physics here. And uh, it's very annoying. So I did do a test piece inside on a few windows where I, I raked out all the old Sikaflex again. And I resealed it with the Sikaflex 291i. So fingers crossed, nothing, nothing was wrong, and uh, it seems to be working. It's holding up. You know, we've had a lot of rain, and, and I checked it out, and you no know, water is getting in there. So hopefully, it, you know, once I do the, all the other inner, inner lip of, of all the windows, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't leak. But uh, yeah, just, just my luck, I guess. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's uh, people are gonna say like, take out the windows, reseal them all again. But I cannot go to that situation. I can't. I, I can't do it. I can't bring myself to have to do something like that. So um, this is how we're going to go from here and uh, and hopefully it holds up. So I really feel like giving up during these times and I know I just have to just tackle these issues one at a time and that seems to be what's working for me. So um, you, I do feel like throwing in the towel at times where, you know, you, you're taking five steps forward, you're making a lot of progress and it's ten steps back, you know, but just have to keep going forward and uh, use the, the good progress as, as motivation.
So we removed the remaining rub rail on the starboard side. It's a little bit rotten and stuff, but of course, we're not going to use this one again. We'll use it as a template when we're making our new one and, and replacing it with, with the new one. Um, we're probably going to go with pine for this. It's pine that was used on the old one, and then look how long it's lasted. So uh, again, we'll go with, with pine, and uh, seeing as it's readily available, we'll get that, and uh, that should do the job nicely. Of course, it can't be done in one, one length, and uh, we'll have to do it in a few different lengths and scarf them in. We do a scarf join, and then maybe we might have to even curve it for the bow. But that, to take that curve at the bow, we, we most likely will have to steam bend it, seeing as it's quite a thick piece of timber, but that shouldn't be an issue. And as soon as the rub rail goes back in place, that will control all the leaks, it'll, it'll prevent any further uh, rainwater from getting into the double diagonal mahogany and then working its way into the build. So that will stop the last of the leaks and we'll assess the gunnel or we'll put in plenty of wood hardener. Of course, we can't go at the gunnel um, because that would that would be a serious job. That would, you know, you'd have to take up the deck and we're just not going there. So that'll be further down the line. Uh, more hands-on restoration com comes down uh, when it comes down to that. Uh, but for now, to uh, seal it, you know. So here on the starboard side of the stern, we're working on replacing the double diagonal mahogany planking. And of course, we're not going to go with double diagonal planking here. We're going to go with plywood. We're going to go up two different mill thicknesses of ply to make back up to the 15 mil of the mahogany planking. And the reason for this as well is to just speed up the process now to get the boat sealed up. And also that it will help take the shape of the of the hull or take take the shape of the stern in different places as well. For the same work up the bow, we're going to use the same thing for the hull up the bow. Two different mills of ply, and it'll help bend it a lot easier. It'll take the shape easy. And uh, even with the getting one sheet in uh, up against those oak frames, it is so strong. And just goes to show you the integrity and structural integrity of this boat and the design of it is just it is incredible um, to use such thin planking and for it to be so strong.
so again, a few small leaks in the cabin wheelhouse roof planking. After all the work I've done, I can't understand it, you know. I did find a few of them, uh, one or uh, two, two of them, and I made sure to scrape any sick effects again and put resin into the into that spacing, and that has sealed those. So there is two left, and from what I can see is that it looks to be getting in where the cabin planks, the cabin roof planks join. They join on a butt joint. So if they join the butt joint, it looks like an afterthought. So I assume you know prior owners of the boat, the, the people that owned the boat before had done some work to this. Maybe they remodeled the cabin. It looks to be where these are butt jointed. There's two cross supports underneath these planks on the inside. And that would explain, that would explain it, you know. Why, why wouldn't they do that, run them in, in full planks, you know? So maybe the cabin was shorter before, and then they did a, an extension to make it longer. Normally, you, you'd most likely do a, a scarf joint here, and that would be much better, um, because, you know, obviously the integrity of just doing a butt joint, is, it's not gonna be strong, and it's gonna have its pitfalls, so. Um, and that's such a small spacing, there's such a small gap there to actually work sick reflex into, or some sort of sealant. Um, so of course it's going to let up over time and I just have to to figure out exactly where that leak is, where those two leaks are and, and get them sealed. I can't rely 100% on just using varnish, two layers of varnish now. I have to actually so find the source and, and seal it. So of course, typical Irish weather, the rain is back and halted progress for another week.
So I'm preparing the cabin plywood for to follow up with a top coat. But first I have to scrape off any old paint from the undercoat and that's loose or it's flaked. And then of course I'm following up with sanding it down with a heavier grit sandpaper and then a finer sandpaper after I didn't film that part. But um, so then it's gradual. Then following up with two coats of undercoat on top of that. So you're building back up that, that ridge line, basically that ridge, you know, where there's a hard edge and uh, you're building it back up so it's ready to take the top coat. And uh, and then after that, it's, it, it's invisible. You won't see it. And I also tin down the, the layers of undercoat. I make sure to tin them down with about a cap full of tinners, uh, paint tinners. And that made sure it, it, was, it was easier to work, but also that it soaked into the timber and it would just give it that bit more extra extra strength or, or uh, protection for, for the plywood. So as soon as the good weather was back, I made sure to get painting the remaining cabin side, so the four cabin and the wheelhouse cabin side as well. When applying each coat of the Hempel Brilliant White top coat, I made sure again to tin it with a cap full of tinners, and this just allowed it to be much more workable. It wasn't so thick and it flowed much easier. So when applying this top coat, of course, I made sure to use the tipping technique I would roll on the paint first and then I would follow it with the brush and work that wet edge so you're left with a nice smooth finish. My father is removing the inside steel plate of the lifting eye and of course as soon as we get the plywood laminated up and in place we will put the lifting eye back in place. Of course this won't be used for the purpose of lifting the boat again. It, will never, it could never take that weight or we couldn't uh, chance it so it will be more for looks and, and to be in keeping with the original design. So where the plywood will meet the double diagonal mahogany we made sure to get plenty of chopped matte fiberglass in there and it will allow the plywood to bed with it nicely, it'll be a nice secure fit, it'll be strong and it'll also prevent any water from getting in there. So this is just the first layer of ply in place. Again there's two sheets here but it'll be followed up with another, each, each sheet of ply will get another sheet on top of that. So it's just incredible how strong this is already, just with all those brass flathead uh, screws in place into those oak frames. Uh, it's incredible just how strong this is, the actual structure and for such a thin sheet of ply, it is pretty amazing. So as the day was nearing an end and uh, it was getting starting to get dark, the rain, we got hit with the rain, but uh, luckily enough, we got it done in time. We got a layer of plastic over it afterwards to make sure it was protected 
and uh, we'd expected a lot of rain to happen that night. We're in it for the long run now for like another week of rain. Hopefully it won't last as long as they say and we'll get back working on it again, get the next sheet in place. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode once again. Thank you for your continued support. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and click that notification icon so you get notified every time I upload a new episode. I'll try my best to get them out more frequently. And then the next episode, we're gonna start working up towards the bow, get the plywood in, in that hole, get that sealed up, and also get the rub rail over the gunnel. That's what's in store for the next episode. As always, guys, stay productive and have fun creating. Uh.